is tut. Hello everybody and welcome back to TipTut and welcome to this Adobe Animate series. Um, I'm not really sure what to call this one uh, because it's a bit of a strange one. Usually in my tutorials I'll introduce you guys to a concept that allows you to explore on your own how best to solve that problem. So intro to Adobe Anim Animate introduced you to the software uh, and gave you a little animation that you could create. Um, this time however uh, I'm going to basically animate the next shot in a project that I've been working on. It's been on the back burner for a while now, but a few of you said you'd be interested in seeing how I create this sort of stuff. So uh, essentially, I'm just going to take you through my thought process as I animate the next shot. Um, if that's something you're interested in, great. If not, then I've got loads of other tutorials that follow a more traditional format. Um, so if this is the first video you're watching on the channel and it's not for you, you can always try another one. Um, but essentially what this is, is a short story, uh, about a minute long, um, about finding people within the void uh, of just general everyday life. And I'm going to take you through the story before I talk about animating it. So it's fairly short, fairly simple. I'm just going to hide through the sketches here. There is essentially... A man sinking into the void. Um, you get this large shot for the loneliness, then a close up of his face where he sort of blinks around in confusion, uh, and then a shot of him sinking further in. Each shot has a different type of abstract background, which I liked. There's this like heavy angle shot of him looking down. Uh, and then he looks to the side and he sees, in fact, that he is not alone in this space. There is a lady there with him. So she then notices him. You get a close-up of her face. And again, the backgrounds are changing in each one. Uh, and they reach out for each other. And you'll see that when they come together, these shots are slowed down because um, I needed time to figure out what I was going to do with them. So as they reach out for it together, they realize that things are better together. Uh, and then the film ends. It's as simple as that. So it's just basically a little abstract art piece. Now, I have animated the two shots that I just showed you. Uh, and you can see them here. So there's the first shot. If I just hide the sketches, there's the first shot of him sinking down into the void. And the second shot of his close up. You can see this is very clean looking. Whereas the version I showed you um, just now has these rough edges. And that is essentially, I take the animation from Animate into Adobe After Effects and I add a noise and turbulent displace to it to give it this rougher texture um, over the entire film. I also add an effect that takes these smooth 24 frames per second animation segments and turns them into 12 frames per second so that we can use things like tweening to um, shift the backgrounds around and stuff like that, but it still maintains that hand-drawn wobbly feel. So this is going to be a bit of a weird series. Um, if it's not for you, I'm sorry. If you do enjoy it, though, um, I'm going to put the file, uh, the background sketch of this next shot up so you can follow along if you fancy it. And hopefully some of you guys will, will get something out of it. Um, so let's just dive right in then. I'm going to briefly take you through what I've got set up, but I'm not really going to explain the intricacies of the software. If, you, if this is your first time opening Adobe Animate, then I do suggest going to the Intro 2 series first. So that's enough waffle. That's far too much waffle, loads more than I usually do. Uh, let's just jump right into the actual tutorial. It's basically two stages to what I've been doing, setting up the background with all these uh, blobs and lines and shapes, and then animating the character on top. Usually I pop him inside a... Um, a graphic and then animate within that. So we're going to take our characters, make that visible, and we're going to collapse the sketches and make sure it's on outline mode, which it is. Okay, so what I've got here is the um, third shot in my animation. And I'm just going to start on the background. I think that's the easiest place to start. So I'm going to grab my paintbrush tool um, and I'm going to choose from my pre select color palette down here, which takes colors which are used in the workspace. And I'm going to grab this white, like so. Uh, and I'm going to draw myself a nice swooping line. Okay. A couple of swooping lines like that. We're then going to close this off. Press K to fill that um, space up. And we'll just make sure that this is on four pixels because everything in this animation uses a thickness of four pixels. And we're just going to come through and neaten this up. Okay. We're then going to come and find in our timeline where the shot ends. And I'm just going to hit F6 to add ourselves a new keyframe in at this point here. 
and here. And I'm going to double up on those so that these uh, endings, so these stop on the next frame so we can start the next scene here as well. I'm just going to delete this second keyframe and I'm going to turn on the onion skin tool. Then with my paintbrush, I'm going to come back in and draw just a slightly different shape. Okay, perhaps this is like a wobbling um, tower of ink or something like that. I'm not really sure what these backgrounds are supposed to represent. I just thought they looked cool. So we're then going to try and add a shape tween between these two points. And you can see here that it's kind of figured out what we want to do, but some of the corners are freaking out a little bit. So what we're going to do is add a shape hint that will hopefully, fi hopefully fix that for us. Now this could go wrong because shape hints are very temperamental, but I'm just going to hit control shift H and that brings up a new shape hint. What this basically is is a point where I'm going to tell the computer I want this to remain the same or similar. So if I drag that to one of the corners on my first keyframe and go to my second corner, second keyframe, there's another um, shape hint here that I can drag up to the same corner and it'll go green when it understands that those corners are linked. So you can see that as you scrub through, it's going to behave less drastically on this corner. You can do this as many times as you want. So I'm going to add a second one up in this top right, go to my second keyframe. It's gone green, so it understands. And you can see that that has resolved that top corner freaking out. So we're just going to do that again for the bottom left and again for the bottom right. Then we'll go to our second keyframe and we'll do the same thing, making sure that D goes over D, C goes over C. We don't accidentally cross them over. And there we go. That's resolved those issues that we were seeing before. So if we play this, we can see we've now got a soft blend between the two keyframes without that background messing up. Let's just save. And in these other versions here, you can see that I've got, if I hide the chaotic sketch lines, I've got these orange lines that go over the top as well. So we're just going to do that on the layer above. We're going to hit Y to bring up our paintbrush again and just go to this um, paintbrush here. And maybe we'll add in something mm, that follows the line but pushes past it like that. So something like this, I think will do nicely. Yeah, that looks pretty good to me. So we're going to go to the next keyframe. We can turn on. Uh, our onion skin again and um, let's have this one straightening out quite heavily we can push him over a bit though so he doesn't overlap or we can even push him over this way so he does overlap I might just tweak oops that is a hard point there probably don't want to tweak, tweak that too much actually um, so let's add a shape tween here and you can see this one's actually done it without any shape hints at all which is really rare <laughs> so we'll just take that as a win so bam, beautiful. I can tell you that that never happens. So we're off to a good start. Um, as far as the background goes, these previous shapes you can see here, um, I've got some graphics that I've created. And what graphics are are just nestled timelines um, that you can create from items. So if I were to draw a um, square, okay, I could then select this square here if I just uh, block the background color and hit F8 and that will bring up the convert to new symbol and I could just call this square. Inside of this, if I double click it, this would then have its own timeline, which if it were 10 frames long, I could set to loop. I could then put this looping um, object onto my stage and it would animate um, without me having to redo it each time. So what I've got over here are some squares and circles already set up and you can preview what these animations do. And these ones kind of just drift about in place. So if I open up this in the library, you can see this is a shape tween between a, just a square and a circle. Okay, so this just saves me some time. What I can do is just drag this out like so. Oops, messed that up because it was playing. I can just drag this out and it'll add it to my stage. I can press Q and I can shift this around. I can maybe scale it up and stick it in the corner like that. And then when I play my animation, it will automatically play and I can duplicate that as much as I want. So if I turn on my sketch, I can see what my original was gonna look like. Um, you can also see I've got a square circle and a squiggle that I'm gonna drop in as well. So I'm not sticking too heavily to my initial plan. Um, but I'm going to follow it a little bit. 
So that'll do for now, because you understand the concept. So now I'm going to create some new symbols um, to show you exactly how that works. So I'm going to grab my pen tool in this case, and I'm going to draw in one of these squiggles just by clicking and dragging like so. That's going to create the line for me. I'm then going to grab my rectangle tool, and I'm just going to draw myself a small little rectangle. If I double click on the edge of that, I can delete the stroke. And if I press I with it selected, I can choose the color that I want. So I'm just going to roughly position this in place. Now this line, I can thicken up like so. And now with these two shapes selected, I'm going to hit F8 and I'm going to call this squiggle rect. I'm going to make sure it's a graphic because there's three types, graphics, buttons, and movie clips. Buttons are for buttons. Movie clips won't preview if you just play them in the software. You have to publish it to see the animation playing, which is no good for us in testing. So I'm going to leave this on graphic. And what that means is if I enter this graphic, which is now in the library, ready to be used whenever I want, I can add in a bunch of uh, keyframes and I'm going to just cut this squiggle with control X, add in a new layer, paste it in place above it. If I then add a new keyframe on the six second mark with F6, I can then start to manipulate these slightly, have it rotate round, maybe scale down a bit. Let's have this rectangle, um, let's have the rectangle scale up both ways. So that'll be Alt Shift, like so, and have it start to drift down. I can then select these frames, create shape tween, and that's it, our drifting rectangles are done. So I can pop back into my scene and you can see all this stuff happening in the background. So I'm just gonna copy a couple of these across, rotate, rescale them. Uh, and you can see straight away how you can quickly build up one of these interesting backgrounds. So we'll pop one over here. I'm not sticking too much to the original pattern because that was just a thought. If I wanted to, what I could do is just duplicate this in the library. So I could make a copy of it. And I could just call it rect only. Then inside of rect only, I could delete the squiggle layer or both keyframes, leaving the rectangle by itself. And I could drag that out into my composition and I could start playing around with this by itself. Okay, I think that's plenty. Maybe we'll just pop one up here. Maybe I'll take this, this guy, spin him around and drop him down onto the edge there. So if we hide the sketch, we can see the background is looking all right. Yeah, pretty happy with that. He's sinking into the void. Um, so let's give these one more frame and let's draw our character. But let's do that next time. Uh, otherwise, it's going to get into a bit of a long tutorial. So thanks very much for watching, everybody. We took a look at shape tweens, um, shape hints, symbols. Again, this isn't an intro series. So if you had trouble following along, check out my intro to animate. This is just a little, um, I wouldn't even really call it a tutorial, just like a follow along um, to see what my thought process is as I create these animations. Uh, if you enjoy it, that's great. Uh, I'm really happy for you. So hopefully I'll see you next time on episode two. I'm not sure how long this series will be, uh, where we're going to take a look at animating the character. Uh, look forward to seeing you then. Remember to subscribe for more tips, tricks, and tutorials. Thanks for watching.